Welcome to my very first video called Pandemics and Money. This is hopefully going to be the first video in a series about gift economy and money and how they relate, how pandemics are actually an outgrowth of money itself. And I'll explain how and why. First of all, we see that pandemics have been a given fact of civilization since it began thousands of years ago. And what is civilization but the domestication of other species? This is the very foundation of civilization. It's the decision to domesticate both plants and animals and to live in close proximity with domestic animals. And we know that the life cycles of organisms such as viruses and bacteria and parasites is often dependent upon two or more species together because life cycles complete themselves through jumping from one species to another. Or as in the case of a virus, it often begins in one species and jumps into another species, which has no immunity against the virus. So it grows exponentially. Now viruses, and bacteria and parasites naturally occur in wild nature, but they're kept in check because animals don't live naturally in such close proximity in massive populations with other species. This is a result of civilization as we know it. Civilization is quite new in the evolutionary scene. As far as I know, we're the only species that owns other species, owns and domesticates. I'm gonna cut the euphemisms and call domestication for what it is, it's slavery. It's control of another species. It's denying the autonomy of another species. That's all it is. When you domesticate another species, you breed it to be perpetually immature. You control its sexual life, but it's not free to sexually reproduce and explore without your control. And often it's bred to not even reproduce sexually at all. We mow grass before it goes to seed. We can't allow it to reproduce freely. We have to control it. And we own another species because we want to control and reproduce it for food, either food or other utilitarian uses such as riding horses or yokes of oxen, pulling plows or dogs providing services. Or the purpose might just be, we want a perpetual baby to take care of that we think is cute. And this is what domestication does. It, it creates a state of perpetual immaturity in animals because immature animals are easier to control and they're non-aggressive. Especially now we have an inordinate amount of domestic animals and humans as opposed to wild animals. Right now in human history, 96% of biomass of mammals on earth is domestic animals and only 4.2% of the biomass of mammals is wild. This is crazy. This is a flip from the way it was only like a thousand years ago. So my theory has been that animal domestication and plant domestication and money, trade, and credit and debt thinking all came in one package because they're based on the same principle. And I believe many of our mythologies speak of this principle happening for example, our own in Western tradition, Garden of Eden story, it talks about the fall from grace, which I have interpreted to mean the fall from grace, from gratis, from gift economy. And with this fall came the ideas of credit and debt. And with it came agriculture, tilling the ground by the sweat of our brows, 
with it came separation of male and female, domination of male over female. This is part of the Eden story and close. And in other myths, it's the concept of stealing fire from heaven, which I, I'm not going to go into that right here, but it's the same idea. It's what separates us from wild nature. So the way agriculture works is you plant a seed, you invest the seed, and you wait for the produce. You wait for the reward. This is the same concept as money. We even call it a seed investment. You plant an investment and you wait for the returns. It's the principle of money. And this is opposed to the principle of, we could call it pay it forward in nature. For example, a bird eats a seed from a tree, eats fruit, swallows the seed and poops it out somewhere else. And the bird doesn't sit there and cultivate the seed and wait for the produce. It pays it forward. Something else will reap the fruits of the labor of the bird, so-called labor. The bird's just doing his thing. Same with the bear eating raspberries there's no conception of i have to pay this raspberry bush back the bear eats the raspberry and moves on and the raspberry bush as far as it's concerned it's receiving a service by the bear eating its berries it, there's no idea of receiving and giving a service it's all one thing is a bear giving a service or receiving a service when it poops in the ground? And are the organisms in the ground receiving a service or giving a service when they eat that poop? Or when a seed sprouts from the poop, the cycles continue a perfect balance in the natural order. And I say that this is precisely because there's no consciousness of credit and debt as there is in human civilization. So with credit and debt thinking comes planting and reaping the rewards of what we plant. And even our religious traditions recommend against this. If you want to follow the spiritual path, you give expecting nothing in return. You pay it forward. This is what, this is a concept in the Bible. It's a concept in the Quran. It's a concept in the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is very clear on this. It even calls it relinquishing the rewards or the fruits of your own actions. It actually uses the word fruit as if you're planting a seed. And the whole concept of money is planting a seed and waiting for rewards from that. It's taking rewards for your own actions. Working for money puts us into a state of delusion. So money represents self-credit, right? I work for a reward. I deserve it. Money represents working for my own reward. And what is reward but praise? And praise Praise and price come from the same root. I work for my own praise. I work for my own price. Whereas in the world of reality, nothing comes from us individually. Everything comes from the whole. We are a product of the whole. We're a product of our culture. We're a product of our biology. We're a product of the whole universe. In fact, all of the energy that is running my body right now comes from the sun. It does not come from me. So I can't take credit for that. So basically, not working for money is acknowledging all credit to the whole, all credit to the all, all praise to the all, hallelujah. And Jesus himself even said, I can do nothing of myself. This is the very principle of not working for money. Also, what comes with this thinking is ownership. 
that's what domestication is. It's ownership of animals and plants and the processes of nature. It's control over the processes of nature that already instinctively naturally happen. For example, in, in our civilization, we have an aversion to anything that's wild. We keep wild separate from us. And we don't allow it within the walls of our civilization just walk around any suburban neighborhood and see how many people obsessively get rid of weeds because weeds are wild or feral they have their own authority civilization domestication cannot stand us having our own authority we have to go to somebody else for authority we can't allow any other species to have its own authority within the walls of civilization. What we don't understand is we are as domesticated as the creatures we domesticate. In fact, there's no reason any creature would want to domesticate another creature unless it is immature. It is immaturity that causes us to own another creature, whether it's slavery of humans or slavery of animals. And we become what we control. So the authorities that we put ourselves in submission under, our authorities also are domesticated and immature. Because what mature person would want to control another? What mature person would want to deny another autonomy, self-authority? Now our agriculture has evolved into factory farming, massive amounts of animals in inhumane conditions living together and in close proximity with us. Another thing that comes with domestication is overpopulation. We overpopulate the domestic animals that we raise, we overpopulate ourselves. And also what I believe comes in the same package as money in agriculture domestication is cancer cancer has been shown to exist in prehistory from fossil findings but it looks relatively rare until civilization comes along and then all of a sudden cancer is found all over in the civilized world this is just a hunch this is intuition but i feel like cancer and monetary civilization also come in together that cancer is a manifestation of money thinking the only two things that i can think of that think that unlimited growth is a virtue are cancer and monetary economy go to any city or county council meeting and what's the one thing that nobody no one will dare question and it's unlimited growth if your economy is not growing perpetually, then we think there's something wrong. And the only other organism that I can think of that thinks this way is cancer, if you can call it thinking. It runs on the principle of exponential growth. A cancer, economy, human population, and even CO2 levels in the climate, they all grow exponentially and they coincide together. There is a correlation. And with overpopulation of both humans and animals comes pandemics also. Big populations of animals and humans living together breeds pandemics. In addition to this overpopulation of animals in factory farms is the excessive use of antibiotics and antiseptics. And the same thing happens in our hospitals. These extremely sterile environments, of course, weed out the weaker microbes and the strongest survive by the laws of natural selection. We're creating super germs. We already see this happening in hospitals. We are creating not only pandemics, but super germ pandemics. It's inevitable that we will see more pandemics as time goes because we are the petri dish of pandemics.